Chapter Minus Two, Kanga Mice. Suddenly a little eye switch appeared and poked Jax on the side of her face. Ouch, said Jax. Oh, it's a magic message. Toll laughed. Better open it, he said. Everyone could see some words opening in thin air in front of Jax. Upsize, said Jax, and the message became really big. Jax grinned. Can you all see that, she asked. Can any of you read backwards? Sky shot up her hand. I can, she said. It says to Jax Matrix. From, told you. Subject, I need to take over reading. And then the message says, OK, I need to take over, please. I love the part about Kangamice. Everyone cheered and Jax laughed. Kangamice are the best, she said, and of course you may take over. Jax handed Toll the manuscript and he found his place. Here we go, he said. Chapter minus two, Kangamice. Once Toll had finished writing in his journal, he left to meet Solo at the Fountain Well. It was in the middle of Innisfree and people loved throwing money into it to make wishes. The fountain was always a buzz because its water sprayed up as it hit the ground. Every hour the whole thing shot water high into the air, a huge jet for each hour of the day from one in the early hours of the morning right up until midday when 12 jets would smash up into the air and then the cycle would repeat from one in the afternoon through until midnight. After dark, there were coloured lights that appeared as if by magic in all the shades of the rainbow. As Toll cycled towards the fountain, he almost crashed into a passing cat dog. The black furry animal half meowed, half barked before disappearing up a tree. There were hybrid animals everywhere on Dragolin. It was one of the benefits of having so many imaginations on the island. Toll's aunt had a poodle that had been crossed with a pink and grey galah. The flying miniature poodle had fuzzy pink fur, grey wings and a white poodle head without the typical beak of a galah. Aunt Thester had named her creation a goodle and if the truth ever came out, everyone would know that she loved her goodle more than her children. Down in the tunnels were scores of kangamice. These miniature beings hopped along instead of scurrying. Toll and Solo loved the little kangamice and they often pleaded with their parents to let them bring some home. But Nell and Bill always insisted that the little creatures would do so much better in their natural habitat. So Toll and Solo had to be content with seeing kangamice when they visited their beloved tunnels. What hardly anyone knew, however, was that some rare hybrid creatures lived far below the ground. Many of these precious beings had lived for centuries. Some were immortal and very valuable. Their greatest fear was that one of their kind would fall into the wrong hands. Consequently, they were terribly shy and almost impossible to find. At exactly the right moment, though, the right people would meet up with one or more of them and then all sorts of amazing things would happen. Solo and Toll only knew this for sure because they were lucky enough to meet up with some. But that's for later on in our story.